All right, I'd now like to have us look at Appendix M, all of the standard reduction potentials, and see how these relate to the terms oxidizing agent and reducing agent. And to do this, we're not going to look at the entire appendix. We're just going to lift three of the half reactions listed in the list of standard reduction potential half reactions. And we're going to remind ourselves what is a reducing agent and what is an oxidizing agent. Well, the reducing agent is something that causes reduction and itself is oxidized. On the other hand, an oxidizing agent, that's something that causes oxidation, and so it itself must be reduced. We've got to keep these things in mind. I'm just going to draw a couple pictures here to, to get us to think about this. So let's see. If I'm a reducing agent, I'm going to cause reduction. So here, I'm a reducing agent. That means I'm going to... I'm going to lose electrons because I have to push these electrons into something to cause reduction. It's like I'm an electron gun if I'm a reducing agent. And because I'm losing these electrons, well, that means I must be oxidized. On the other hand, if I'm an oxidizing agent, then I must pull electrons from something. It's like I'm an electron vacuum in a sense. And so if I'm pulling electrons from something, I'm causing something to be oxidized but I myself am reduced because I'm pulling electrons in. All right, just a reminder of these two, these two terms. Now, I want to relate these two terms to the list of standard reduction potentials. So if we look, we remember all of the half reactions, they're listed as reductions. They're all listed as reductions. So let's see. Causes reduction. No, all of these, hmm, on this side over here, because they are reduced as written, all of these things over here, like magnesium 2 plus, iron 2 plus, and oxygen, they're all being reduced so they can cause the oxidation of something else. So I can read all of these as written as they are oxidizing agents. And so I can look over here and get an idea of how good of an oxidizing agent all of these things are. So how good of an oxidizing agent is magnesium, uh, magnesium ion? Well, not very good. Look at that low cell potential. That's a very negative cell, cell potential. Remember, this is spontaneous. This is non-spontaneous. Got to remind ourselves of that occasionally. So magnesium is a very poor oxidizing agent. And oxygen of the list, that's going to be the best. That's going to be a very good oxidizing agent. Now, let's imagine we're going to flip these. So we're going to look at these in this direction, in which case magnesium solid is going to go to magnesium ion. So that's an oxidation if we look at it in this direction. So if something is oxidized, it's causing reduction, and it's a reducing agent. So I can view solid magnesium as a reducing agent if I look at this going in this direction. And if this goes in this direction, I'm going to flip this sign, positive 2.38, holy cow. Solid magnesium is a really good, let's see, i got to make sure, it's a really good reducing agent. <laughs> it's, <good. laughs> it's really tough to think about these things, you can tell. Okay, and let's look at iron solid. If it's going in this direction, it's oxidized. So it's a middle-of-the-road reducing agent. And water, if we look at it in this direction, that's going to be a negative 1.23 volts. So if water gets oxidized, it's causing a reduction. That's a really bad reducing agent with a negative 1.23 volts. So when you have a list of half reactions, you'll notice that if something has a very positive cell potential, that means it's reduced very easily. And so the things on this side are going to be very good oxidizing agents. If it's reduced easily, it's going to be a good oxidizing agent. On the other hand, things with very negative cell potentials, those are oxidized easily, and so they're going to be very good reducing agents, but you should recognize those reducing agents, those are going to be on the product side of the reduction half reaction. Okay, so let's, let's try to fit this together. Let's say I want to reduce iron 2 to solid iron. Let's see, cell potential minus 0.44 volts. If I want to reduce this, well, I want an oxidation that's going to be highly positive. So, of course.
course, I'm going to flip these to do the oxidation. So if I flip this, I get a positive 2.38 volts. If I flip that, I get a negative 1.23 volts. It should be obvious that what we want to couple with this particular reaction to reduce the iron is the oxidation of solid manganese. Excuse me, magnesium. And since I flipped this reaction, I flipped the sign. And when I add them together, the two electrons cancel those two electrons, and I see that I can quite easily reduce iron 2 to solid iron using uh, solid magnesium. And the magnesium will get oxidized to magnesium 2 plus. And what's that going to come out to? That's going to be 2, 4. That's going to be roughly. Uh, positive 2 volts, approximately. Now let's say I've got some iron that I want to actually oxidize, solid iron. So I want to I want to oxidize this to iron 2 and 2 electrons. And let's see, my cell potential there stays at, well, I flipped it, so it's going to be positive 0 0.44 volts. Well, in this case, what's going to work? Well, let's see. Hey, this is, right? A good oxidizing agent is something that has a strong positive reduction potential. So I'm going to couple this with this. So let's see. Oxygen plus 4H plus plus 4 electrons. That's going to go to 2 waters. And my cell potential, that's going to be a positive 1.23 volts. My electrons don't balance, but that's an easy fix. I can go two of these, two of these, four of these. I still, since this is a joule per coulomb, I'm still getting the same amount of energy per charge. So this stays the same. And overall, I see that I can oxidize iron, two iron plus O2. Electrons cancel. I got to leave in my 4H plus. Goes to two iron two plus two waters, and my cell potential for this reaction is going to be spontaneous, one point six seven volts. So what we want to remember is that things that are easily reduced with a positive reduction potential, those are going to be good oxidizing agents. And the oxidizing agent, that's going to show up on this side of the half reaction. Things with very negative reduction potentials are going to be oxidized easily. So those are going to be good reducing agents. But because you got to remember, we're flipping this to oxidize it, making this our reducing agent. Your reducing agent is going to show up on the product side of a half reaction of a reduction half reaction. And of course, when you flip it, then you can see the, the reducing agent as such.